This was a study uh, with a new compound out of the class of S1P uh, modulators, Siponimod, which uh, is more selective for two of the receptors, uh, S1P1 and S1P5, and has a shorter half-life uh, than uh, Fingolimod, the first in class that is already approved in relapsing MS. And we tried in a large uh, study to find out if this compound can change the course of secondary progressive MS, which is still an area and a group of patients uh, that, uh, where we have uh, the, an unmet need. Because there is um, only partially approved uh, treatments, interferon, and most uh, physicians would think that it, we don't have a real uh, impact on this uh, phase of the disease. It was um, a randomized, two-to-one randomized, double-blind study. Uh, every patient taken a pill, uh, taking a pill once a day and it was event-driven, so when we reached a certain number of events, we uh, stopped the study, but uh, we had more than 95% of the patients who had completed at least one year in the study. It was defined by the investigators and documented that they had had at least half a year of continuous progression. Most of them had more than three, four years of uh, secondary progression after a relapsing course. This might have been one or two years with relapses, but it could also be 10 or 15 years. The mean duration of the disease was uh, 17 to 18 years. Uh, so they were quite far in this uh, phase of secondary progression and approximately one-third of the patients had experienced a relapse in the two years before they entered the study. Uh, All the others had no relapse at least for two years uh, before entering the study. Fingolimod was, uh, an, was a reason uh, not to be included in this study because you would expect that if they stopped this treatment they would have had uh, uh, no response or side effects so, uh, so this was not... Uh, actually it was not formally excluded but I think we didn't have these patients uh, because it's uh, introduced now five years ago uh, for relapsing MS, so the probability that these patients would come into the progressive phase, uh, uh, but uh, it was uh, very low anyway. We saw uh, that in the primary outcome, in the primary outcome progression of uh, disability as measured by the expanded disability status scale, the EDSS, we uh, uh, saw a delay and a reduction in the probability of uh, worsening by 21%, which was statistically significant. The usual side effects that you see with uh, S1P uh, functional antagonists, that means uh, lymphopenia, which is a part of the um, effect, the is a pharmacodynamic measure of the effect. Uh, we uh, saw somewhat higher frequency of headache, uh, nausea, vomi uh, not vomiting uh, has occurred, but in general uh, this was not a problem for the patients. I think it's uh, certainly a glimpse of hope because always when you have a certain result uh, some patients may respond better, some perhaps less and uh, it is uh, at least partially effective in delaying the development of disabilities so in some way um, giving patients uh, more time with less disability and uh, on the other side with a side effect profile that does not have a negative impact on quality of life. You don't need to inject yourself, you don't have immediate adverse events uh, of taking the drug, so all these aspects speak uh, in favor of uh, such treatment even if it is only partially effective.